What is going on everyone? Welcome to a day of eating video. So this week happens to be a deload from the gym. I don't want to show you those workouts, you don't want to see them, they're kind of boring. So I figured, hey, it's a good time. What does he eat every single day? So today is a day where I do not go to the gym. Reason I'm telling you that is because personally my macros do change a bit on days that I do not go to the gym and days I do go to the gym. I have explained my reasoning behind this in my last few day of eating videos, but I'm sure a lot of you haven't seen that, so I'm going to briefly go over that quickly now. Basically, I've been, my goals are not like most of you. and For most of you, I would say 99.9% .9 of you, I do recommend you eat the same macros whether you go to the gym or whether you're off from the gym. For me, I've been lifting 12 years and at the moment my goal is not to gain muscle, it's not to lose fat. It's simply to stay exactly where I am. And I figured with some trial and error that when I was having the same amount of carbs every day, I would tend to look a little bit more soft or smooth, I guess you could say. So I started experimenting with lowering carbs on off days and increasing the fat and protein. And overall, I noticed that I have a little bit of a, like a, a leaner look um, overall. Um, so what I do is my calories are about the same on each day but I do have higher carbs on my gym days and I replace those carbs with more protein and fat on my off days. Now, the reason I say you should not listen to me is because I'm doing this strictly from like an aesthetic perspective. I definitely notice that on days that I go to the gym after my lower carb, higher fat days, I don't have as much energy as if I just kept the carbs the same every single day. So I kind of sacrifice performance for aesthetics because that is my goal at the moment. Like I said, most of you, that is not going to be your goal. So I do recommend you keep your macros the same every day. It's also easier, and that's pretty much what you should do. Don't, don't overthink it. So, um, I'm about to have meal one, if you want to call it meal one. I kind of do an intermittent fasting type thing on my days off from the gym, meaning I really eat most of my food from like 12 o'clock on, and I don't really eat anything in the morning. It's morning right now. Um, what I am about to have is just a little protein shake. Um, there's only 19 grams of protein in here. Uh, the protein that I currently use is this universal... Uh, egg protein. Um, I really like the egg protein. It has a very nice consistency compared to whey and casein. Uh, the reason it's only 19 grams is because it's, I don't consider it a meal. It's simply to hit the rest of the protein that I'm not going to be hitting later in the day. Pretty much I figured out my macros of the day. I'm like short like 19 grams of protein and I just throw that shake in the morning and I also throw my creatine in it. Just, a, just simplicity purposes. So I don't consider that a meal. That's all I'm doing. Um, so I'm going to take you through everything I eat for the day and I'm going to just discuss like macros and macro tips and just some common questions that I get asked a lot all the time about macros. So hopefully you guys learn a few things, you can get some meal ideas and I can help you guys out. So funny story, uh, I just ate that meal that you saw and I actually recorded a clip of me discussing the meal and discussing macros and I didn't hit the record button. So the meal is gone, uh, but what you just saw, um, that was six eggs, there was uh, spinach and tomato mixed in and then I had six slices of uh, 40 calorie bread on the side. Yeah, six slices of bread, well there's 40 calories so each one is like, if you put two together, it's kind of like three slices when you really think about it of like normal bread. Six eggs, you might be thinking, oh my god, are you going to die? Uh, I don't want to discuss eggs now, but I've had a lot of eggs for a, a lot of years, and my cholesterol is low. Um, that's all I'm going to say on that topic right now. So, um, as far as this meal, I've had this like in all my day of eating videos, but a lot of you have messaged me that you've tried it and you really like it. I didn't think the meal was that special, but I guess a lot of you thought it was good, so glad that I helped you guys out with that. Uh, what I wanted to discuss in the meal, but I actually did just discuss but didn't hit record. I want to discuss uh, like macros just in general. So people ask me all the time, how many, what are your macros? Uh, how much cardio you do? Almost as if it's like a secret formula. And if you copy my macros exactly, you'll just wake up looking like me. And you have to realize that macros are very, very individual. My macros today aren't even the same as they were two years ago. And they're nowhere close to what they were like five years ago, seven years ago, eight years ago. They change over time based on your goals, your age, uh, how much muscle you have, how much fat you have, and like preferences. So just because you see my macros, which I put on the screen in the very beginning of the video, just because you eat those macros, it's not a magic number. You're not going to start looking like me. You really need to figure them out for yourself. So having said that, um, I'm not going to discuss how to figure out your macros. I have done that in the past. 
But once you figure out your macros, that's not a number that you just follow for the rest of your life. That's a number that's going to need to be adjusted and it's simply a starting point. So if you're trying to gain weight, that number is going to have to eventually increase as you gain weight because as you gain weight, your body changes, your needs change. Now you need more macros. You have to increase your macros. You're trying to lose weight. Well, as you start losing weight, now your body changes, your needs change, you'll probably need less calories, you'll have to lower your macros. So just because you have a certain amount of macros to hit, that's not like your number for the rest of your life. It's not like that stupid sleep number bed where it's like, oh, I'm number eight. Like, you know, it's not like your magic macros. You have to keep changing them over time. So you can't look at someone else's macros and follow them. And you can't even look at what your own macros are and necessarily follow them forever. Because like I said, it's going to change. It depends on your age, it depends on your um, gender, it depends on your goals, metabolism, it's just your activity level, the job you have, how many days you work out, how much cardio you do. So there's so many factors that go into it. So I just have to stress to you guys, do not try to copy my macros. Do not try to copy someone else's macros. Your macros are specific to you. They're highly individual. So I ate those eggs a little while ago. They are pretty good. I'll see you guys in the next meal and I'm going to discuss alcohol. All right guys, next meal. Uh, yeah, all right, good, we're, we're recording this time. Uh, so we got a few things here. It's kind of like a hodgepodge of stuff. So first, we got some almonds right there, some fat. This is the Poverty Brownie. Now, I think I showed how to make it in my last day of eating video. This changed my life. What this is, 15 grams of egg protein from Universal, this stuff. There's 15 grams of casein protein, and then eight grams of baking powder, and 10 grams of unsweetened Hershey cocoa. You mix it in with like 100 grams of water, put it in the microwave for about a minute and a half, and it comes out and forms this baby. So the reason I like it is it's very, very high volume. It's very sweet like a dessert, and it's so low in calorie for the amount of volume that it is. You don't need to use the egg protein. I used to make it with just whey. The egg protein, it does make it fluffier, it does make it more of like a cake, which makes sense because like when you bake stuff you put eggs in it, so egg whites, um, it makes sense that it would happen. So I do recommend the egg protein for this, but you could use whey as well. Um, that's two things. Then we have an Eat Me Guilt Free chocolate chip cookie. Um, I like Eat Me Guilt Free cookies. These The cookies don't have the best macros, um, but it's kind of small. Um, it's 10 grams carbs, 7 fat, 15 protein for this, and I'm also having this eat me guilt free so these they sent me these the other day i open the box and i see a question mark i see no nutri no nutrition facts and i'm like freaking out i'm like oh my god what is this what are the macros what is it so i send them a message and so it's a uh, cheesecake this one and they have the same macros as the blondie which i had before so for this whole this thing it's 22 grams of protein it is seven grams of carbs and five grams of fat. I might be mixing up the fat and the carbs, it's seven, five, either way. So this has incredible macros and similar to, to the Poverty Brownie, it's great macros and pretty filling for what it is. That's the reason I love these. So I will be having all of this together. So this meal is kind of more like a snack, I guess you could say, but what I wanted to discuss in this snack is tracking alcohol. So let me first say that I do not drink myself. I've never really, I never got into drinking in high school, college, it's just not my thing. But a lot of you guys probably do drink and you wanna know how to track it. So there's two ways you can go about it. You could either one, not track it at all because I mean, you're having fun, it's okay to live a little bit. But if you do wanna track your alcohol, track it as carbs. So what that means is, let's say you're having a, a beer that has like 150 calories. Obviously it has alcohol and alcohol has seven calories per gram, but don't track the alcohol as like calories as like a macro, don't do that. Take the 150 calories and just count the whole thing as carbs. So you take the 150 divided by four, I don't know what that is, what is it, 25 times, it's, it's like 30-ish. So whatever, the, whatever 150 divided by four is, that's how many carbs you'll track it as and just put that into your fitness pal or my fitness pal or whatever pal, whatever app you're using to track it and track the whole thing as carbs. Is it perfect? No, but that's how I recommend doing it. You don't need to be completely perfect with this. That's only if you do decide to track your alcohol. Another way to go about it is don't track, don't count it at all. But if you know you're going to be drinking, just eat less carbs for the day, knowing that you're going to be filling in the rest of the calories with alcohol. So. That's how I recommend tracking alcohol. Replace, count the whole thing as carbs. It's not perfect. Will alcohol kill your gains? No. As long as you're not crazy about it, you're allowed to have fun. If it's something you enjoy, I do believe you should do it. So 
Like I said, I don't personally drink, but you, if you do, don't give it up for fitness. You should incorporate both. So I'm going to eat this little snack now, and I will see you in the last meal of the day where I consume about half my calories. And by the way, here is the poverty brownie, the consistency, if you could tell. All right, guys, so it's time for the last meal of the day. And like I said, it's the biggest. So what you just saw, we got a chicken burger with reduced fat guacamole, both from Trader Joe's. It's on a Martin's potato slider bun. We also have a salmon burger. We have broccoli. That's what's on that plate. This is a whole bag of Trader Joe's cauliflower stir fry. Comes in a package frozen. You just make it like that. Nothing else to do. We got a package of butter lettuce mixed with full fat ranch dressing and some feta cheese. And then we have two slices of that 40 calorie bread you saw earlier with peanut butter. So I have all this food at night because I'm hungriest at night. So I prefer to save my food for a night. You don't have to do that. That's just what I do. So I'm sorry that I didn't show you like the packages of all the ingredients. I did do that in my last day of eating video and it's a lot of similar foods. So if you do want to see it, go back. It's just that the last video is kind of long. A lot of people said it was too long. So I decided to cut that stuff out. And now I'm sure a lot of people are going to say that. I should have included it, so you can't please everyone. I learned that the, the hard way. But two things I want to talk about in this meal before I eat this. So people are asking about salt intake and sugar intake. Now starting with salt, my salt intake is a little high, but I do drink a lot of water. I exercise regularly. My blood pressure is fine, so I am personally not too worried about it. I do think that it's something you should be aware of, but as long as you're working out, you're drinking enough water, and you're not going too crazy with processed foods, you should be okay. But don't take that as medical advice, just take that as like what I personally do. If you have any blood pressure issues or a doctor tells you otherwise, listen to them, don't listen to me. As far as sugar intake is concerned, now as long as you're eating mostly healthy foods, your sugar intake really should not be a problem. So if you're eating a lot of junk, then your sugar intake might be an issue. But if you're following a healthy diet, I don't really see it why your sugar intake would necessarily be so high. Now, if you eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, those are all sugar. So your sugar intake might be high, but I wouldn't tell you that you're eating unhealthy because you're eating a lot of apples, you know? So again, if you're eating mostly healthy foods, I do not believe sugar intake is really much of an issue. But again, take that as my recommendation. Don't take that as medical advice. If you are eating a lot of like sugary candies and cookies and stuff, well then that could be an issue. But if you're getting most of your sugar from like fruits and vegetables, I never heard anyone tell me that uh, fruit was bad for you or vegetables were bad for you. So I would not worry if that's the case. But anyway, I strongly recommend this cauliflower uh, stir fry from Trader Joe's. It's incredible. Trader Joe's has a lot of awesome things, such as the guacamole, the chicken burgers. So if you have one near you, I definitely recommend it. But all this is probably getting cold now, so I'm going to go ahead and eat it. Hope you guys found the video helpful. I kind of found, I feel like it was a little bit of kind of boring, but. I don't know, a lot of people want to see what I eat, so this is what I eat. So if you guys did like the video, you found it helpful, hit the thumbs up. It does help me out a lot. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet. Follow me on Instagram because that's really the best place to follow me. I show food every day. I show my workouts every day. Um, it's a lot more updating in real time than these YouTube videos, so I do recommend that. And I'll see you in the next video.